Martha. Hello. So, um, with your permission, I'm going to introduce you to our Israeli viewers. Absolutely. Shalom. אני איריס בר לב ממרכז יסודות בירושלים, ואני יושבת פה עם מרתה פילפסון, שהיא בעלת בית הספר Essential Somatics. השיטה פותחה במקורה על ידי תומאס האנה, ומרתה היא המורה שאצלה למדתי. ואני רוצה לנצל את ההזדמנות שאנחנו יושבות פה ביחד, לערוך רעיון קצר ולשאול אותה מספר שאלות. So, מרתה, yes, you are the owner of Essential Somatics. and uh, the professional training program for the clinical somatic education. And today you teach essential somatics all over the globe. Yes. Can you tell us a bit more about what it is you do? Well, what I do is, and I have a wonderful training team uh, who works together with me, and we teach uh, clinical somatic education, essential somatic education. This is uh, the... Our interpretation of it and the and the evolution of the original work of Thomas Hanna we teach it all over the globe we teach a uh, foundational open to the general public um, uh, workshops and called, well one is called the uh, the fundamentals immersion and then we also teach the essential somatic movement teacher training which teaches people to um, teach the basic of somatic movements uh, very skillfully and accurately and then we teach the clinical somatic um, clinical somatic education professional training which combines the movement and the clinical hands-on method methods that Thomas Hanna you originally created but then we we, we evolve it um, based on the combination of, of Hannah's work what she felt in crisis work and And uh, the, the, the trauma work of Bessel van der Kolk and Peter Levine and, and then other current day somatic pioneers. So, so yes, we take, take uh, quite a few courses around the world to uh, get the message out to people that, that um, they don't have to live a life of pain and movement restriction. They actually have more choice in how they're going to feel, how they're going to move. And the way that they're going to greet life and adapt to life and can you tell us more about what what is the uniqueness of Thomas Hannah's work which different differs from other movement educational modalities oh yes well Thomas Hannah was very specific and what is what is brilliant about this work is that it really gets to the root of most chronic muscle pain which is the brain and And the way in which the brain um, adapts teaches you to adapt to the stresses of your life or actually to to make choices to to not become a victim of your stress and your life circumstances so so he what he did is he he codified a term called sensory motor amnesia which is that state of chronically contracted muscles that simply won't let go no matter what you do you And um, you could have gone to 10 different practitioners. You might even have had surgery or taken drugs to ease your pain or try to change your movement. But really the problem is in your brain and the way your brain senses and moves you. So he called that sensory motor amnesia. And he also um, saw that sensory motor amnesia shows up within three very specific stress reflexes. And this is based in neurophysiology and his studies of neurophysiology. And these are the, the, the green light reflex, the Landau response, the uh, red light reflex or the startle response, and then the trauma reflex or the gallant response, right? So it's either the back, the front, or the sides of your body. So he said, hmm, people get stuck in very specific ways and you can see them in everyone. It's universal. And then he... took another uh, re- reflex which is called pandiculation it's the sort of yawning contracting and slowly lengthening m- movement action pattern that is in the brain and he applied that to movement so what is very unique is that this is an educational approach that uses the workings of the brain to teach someone how to be more self-aware and self-monitoring self-correcting and then ultimately self-actualizing so it it 
confers, it gives, gives the client the tools to be able to take care of themselves and to be more stress resilient and more at choice in the way that they live their lives and the way that they move. And which is so, um, a lot of other therapies or modalities are more uh, sort of outside in. They're the practitioners trying to fix you. Whereas Hannah's approach, and this is based, this is somatic education, says, no, you're the expert. And it's, and it's an inside job. So it's more an inside out approach instead of an outside in. Which means you are less dependent on outside exactly. help or exactly. fixing. Yes, and yet, because education involves a good teacher, it's a conversation. It's a two-way street. Yeah. Okay. It's amazing. I, have to <laughs> I agree. agree. It's amazing. I agree. Um, so, there, you teach movement group classes and private, private clinical somatic lessons or sessions. Yes. What's the difference between the two? Well, there's a, there's a big difference, and the two are definitely a, 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 should be done in combination. I think so. So, a the somatic movement practice is really the the linchpin to success for the clinical sessions. So, but first of all, the clinical sessions are one to one um, sessions done with a skilled, qualified practitioner, and. What happens is that you learn to become aware of the way that you walk, stand, what's tight when you lie down, what's tight when you sit down. So you start to become aware, again, from the inside out of, of basically, you know, how you're showing up in life, what's tight, what's relaxed. And the practitioner is there to look at you from the outside in and assess what's not moving, where you might be out of balance, but you're part of the process. You are actually um, giving feedback to your practitioner and your practitioner is giving feedback to you about where things are tight, where things are relaxed and how you can uh, reverse that, right? So that you're more balanced and you're more neutral. But in a clinical session then what happens is you're first assessed in this manner you're first assessed, and your practitioner looks for one of these three reflex patterns. Is your back really tight, the, 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 the green light reflex? Are you rounded and slumped and contracted in the center, red light reflex? Maybe you're out of balance, um, you know, one shoulder, one side of your pelvis is a little bit more out of balance on one side, that's the trauma reflex. And so the, the practitioner will choose a clinical lesson to teach you that involves uh, assisted pandiculation, hands-on, se measured sensory feedback, um, you and you and the practitioner in order to slowly release the muscles to repattern the brain and the muscle connection and, and working muscle group by muscle group uh, within this, these reflex patterns. So you learn how to release the muscles involved in each reflex pattern but you do it slowly and, and smoothly with the practitioner's help. And then at the end of the session, you're taught a couple of movements that will reinforce the progress that you make. And most, most clients make a lot of progress, pretty rapid progress in one clinical session because of the one-to-one -one feedback with the practitioner, right? Because the because sensory motor amnesia, the nature of it means that you can't sense and feel what you can't sense and feel. And so you could be doing these movements at home by yourself and feeling pretty good, but you don't know what you don't know about what you are or maybe aren't moving. So that's where a skilled set of eyes and a skilled set of hands comes in to say, ah, you think you're doing something, but you're actually not. Let me help you sense and feel that better. So that's the beauty of the, the clinical sessions. But then at the end, you learn the movements that will help reinforce this wonderful fluidity that you have just created so that your brain... Um, so that your brain regains the mastery over these movement patterns. And the more you do your daily practice, the more you will continue to move with freedom and ease. If you don't do your daily practice, then you might find yourself taking a couple steps back before you take a couple steps forward. 
So the two of them are very uh, married together. But the movement practice on its own is extremely powerful. And they are self-pandiculations of these beautiful developmental movement patterns of extension and flexion and side bending and rotating. And um, there are loads of somatic movements. And doing a daily practice just prepares you to move well in your life. Going to a weekly class is very powerful because life is dynamic. You just don't know what life is going to throw at you every day. So you want to be prepared. And it's sort of like rebooting your computer every day when you do your practice. Yeah. So you gave us a, an explanation explanation of uh, the difference between self-pendiculation and mm -hmm. hands-on assisted pendiculation mm -hmm. from a, a certified practitioner. Yes. What is pendiculation? Oh, well, thank you. That's a good, very good question. Now, pendiculation is a, a brainstem action pattern. And do you have a cat or a dog? Or have you ever seen yeah, cats and dogs? Sure. What they, yes. We think, oh, that looks so yummy, and they're stretching. Well, they're not actually stretching. They're pendiculating. And a pendiculation, the technical, the, 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 the dictionary, uh, definition is it's a yawning stretch. I think the operative word is yawn. So there are three steps to a pendiculation. The first is, now think for, for viewers out there, think of a yawn. So when you yawn, first you contract into your muscles and then you slowly release them. And then you completely relax and you go, oh, that was just delicious, right? So what the, why, the reason that we all yawn like that and the reason that cats and dogs pandiculate about 30, 40 times a day, babies pandiculate when they're in utero, when they just wake up from a nap and they arch their backs, right? It's because every time we do that, we are resetting our sensory motor system. We are resetting our ability for our brain to sense the muscles when you contract into that, you do it with your whole body. And you, and you go, whoa, this is my body. And then you slowly release and your brain is taking back control of the muscle length and the function. Then you relax and your brain has time to integrate all this new sensation. So it really is what keeps us present in our body when we pendiculate. Now the difference between that and stretching is that when you take a muscle and you stretch it and you try to pull it into a length you want it to be, you actually could make it tighter by invoking the stretch reflex. It's a brain, it's a spinal cord reflex. So a pandiculation is a full body experience. A stretch is when you take one muscle and you try to yank it. And, and pandiculation is tied to the brain and stretching is not tied to the brain. So pandiculation has a very powerful effect on our ability to reset our muscles and eliminate chronic tension. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you mm -hmm. for that. So um, I wanted to ask you, who is essential somatic suitable for? Is, is it addressed to a partic particular kind of population? Is it, is it good for kids, for adolescents, adults, the elders? Um, is it good for people dealing with uh, certain health conditions or chronic pain? Oh yes, I think, well here's the thing is, is, is movement is life and life is movement. So there's nobody in the world who A, doesn't need to move and B, doesn't respond to stress. Life is also stress. So I, so really this work is, is targeted to those with chronic pain. And, and those who would like to restore mobility. But it's really appropriate for everyone because even a child in school these days has a lot of stress coming to him or her with, you know, exams and heavy backpacks and sitting at a desk and not moving. That's a lot of stress. For and the mind. playing with a mobile. Phone. Yes, and sitting there with a Game Boy when they're only two years old. There's a lot of a lot of uh, negative stress that comes at us and a lot of positive stress as well. And the point is that we need to be prepared to live life uh, embodied, present, and aware 
of the of the, of the way that we feel in our bodies and the way that we feel in our bodies is going to inform the way that the choices that we make so, right and as not, and not to mention the physiology our ability to breathe and our ability to release and relax our nervous system so children really need this work because children need to be encouraged to be self-aware to be encouraged to be embodied so that they that they they can sense when something isn't right when something is right so they can be empowered right and um uh teenagers as well teenagers these days there's a there's a there's a, an epidemic of depression and anxiety, which uh, Bessel van der Kolk, who is probably the world's trauma expert, really feels is tied directly to trauma, the traumas of childhood, the traumas of, of, of being, a, being an adolescent. And, um, and if, we, if we cut off the way that we feel, when our brain is affected by trauma, it changes our brain, it changes our experience of our bodies. When our experience of our bodies is is out of sync, then we are out of sync with the people around us. So, uh, and he, and he also agrees that movement, somatic movement, is the first step to to getting us back into a pleasant and comfortable and safe sense of our bodies, a self actual an ability to self actualize. So teenagers um, really need this work to 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 be able to tap into what it feels like to be them in a positive way. So young, ch young children, teenagers, uh, anybody who's had accidents, injuries, surgeries, um, uh, you know, uh, emotional or psychological stresses, we need this work on a daily basis just to, 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 to reset ourselves and to, to be aware of ourselves and to find a pleasant experience of ourselves. Um, uh, the elderly, absolutely, because you know, by by virtue of the blessing that you you're older, and I'm and I would put put myself in the senior citizen category at this point in my life, is uh, well, we've had uh, maybe more accidents, injuries, surgeries, maybe more loss, you know, friends and family who have died. So by virtue of the fact that we've had more opportunities to be stressed in life, we also have more opportunities to get tight and slumped and contracted and inward so, and and that is uh what people think is inevitable as we age and that's uh, absolutely incorrect it's not scientifically provable it's really that the stresses of life the way in which we adapt to our stresses will determine the way in which we feel as we get older and the way in which we move so uh, i see 17 year olds who look like the archetype of a hundred year old person all slumped over because of this computers or anxiety. And then I see 80 year olds who are moving forward with grace, right? An upright posture. So, uh, and, and even someone with a disease process like cancer or multiple, um, uh, multiple sclerosis can benefit from this work. It's not going to get rid of the disease, but it will help that person feel better in their body on a daily basis as they deal with the effects of that disease. Fibromyalgia, this is very powerful work with fibromyalgia, for fibromyalgia, and, and it helps them deal with the effects of the disease. Mm -hmm. So uh, I don't know anybody in the world, even someone in, I've worked with people in wheelchairs who have benefited from, it, from, from this work. They can't do it in the same way that someone who is ambulatory can, and yet they can still feel better in their bodies. One of your teachers, Karen Hewitt, yes. uh, tells her story when she came to Thomas Hanna in a wheelchair, yes. and after two clinical sessions with him, she was walking. She was wheelchair. walking with no, with no need for a wheelchair or a cane. And, um, and she realized, uh, he taught her that she had sensory motor amnesia. She didn't have uh, an incurable uh, musculoskeletal problem. Yeah. Powerful stuff. Yeah. 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 Um, what benefits has essential somatics to offer to healthy people like athletes? Oh, runners, great question. Dancers. Right. Great question because I have, uh, I've had quite a few people come to the fundamentals immersion and say, well, I don't really have pain, but I just kind of, 
I, do, I well, I want to feel fantastic for the rest of my life, but then sometimes I just feel like uh, I'm just not comfortable. Well, and maybe they want to perform better. Absolutely, it could be that they just want better performance. Now, what's per, what's wonderful about this work is that it is a foundational practice. It prepares you to move well in all areas of your life. Now, I was a professional dancer, and I had to retire early because of recurring injuries. And that's very common in elite athletics uh, and in dance. So um, the benefit of essential somatics and clinical somatic uh, sessions for someone like that is that it keeps you on top of your game by preparing your sensory motor system, your brain and your muscles to do better that which you are training for. In, and when you do, if you do have an overtraining accident or you, or you do have a crash on your bicycle, if you're in a road race, well, your brain is going to respond and going to contract certain muscles to protect those muscles when you have that crash or have that overtraining injury. But you will be able to recover faster because you will, you will be in, 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 in the driver's seat of your muscles. So I, uh, I'm always very excited. We, we have more and more young people coming to our trainings and more and more young people who are involved in movement who just say, you know what, this is what's keeping me in the ballet studio or this is what's keeping me running on the track is that I do my practice before and I do my practice after and I don't have to work so hard. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the next question would be, um, are there people that somatics uh, might not be suitable for? I'm hard-pressed to f think of people who it would not be suitable for because everyone needs to move. Life is movement, movement is life. And all learning, Thomas Hanna said, all learning is sensory motor in nature. Yet that has been that has been proven by many educators before Thomas Hanna and even before Moishe Feldenkrais, is that in order to learn, we must be able to move, even if even if we are a quadriplegic in a wheelchair and we would like to read, we still have to be able to move the muscles of our eyes across the page in order to read. So all movement, all life is movement. So so. Uh, and, and somatic movements can be done through imagination, through what we call motor planning. You don't even have to be physically moving to do, uh, to do this work. You can be imagining the movements that you would like to be doing. And, and it's been neurologically proven that then the, the muscles that are involved in the movement that you're imagining light up as if you are actually moving. So I don't know a person in the world for whom this is not beneficial. Yeah. Yeah. I can't think of anyone who couldn't benefit in some some way, shape, or form. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And it can be done sitting, standing, sitting, lying. standing. You can do you can do the movements that in, in, in I did them in the airport before I, uh, you know, came over here. And um, uh, it's very, it's very, uh, it's a very adaptable practice. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Can you please share with me what inspires and motivates you to get up in the morning and oh. travel all around the globe and teach? <laughs> oh my goodness! When you see when you see someone wake up in their bodies, uh, it is it's it's a when you're able to witness. This kind of waking up of someone's understanding that they are actually the ones who can create freedom from within. It's a very humbling experience and it's a very inspiring experience. So I get emails all the time from people who just say, I read your book and it changed my life. I knew that there was something I, I could do. I read Martha's book and it changed my life. That's why <laughs> I came go. to this woman to <laughs> ask her to teach me everything she knows. And yes. her book is highly recommended. Thank you, thank you. And when you know when you when you uh, um, teach someone, give someone the skills to make a positive difference in their life, and you see that happening, it's a very 
It's almost an emotional experience as a teacher. And how could you say no? How could you say no if someone says, could you come to my country to teach? Because uh, I really feel that this has, um, this work has, has a, a level of, of transformational uh, possibility that if I imagine a world in which people are embodied, can you imagine politicians who are embodied and before they decided to, to do something, they felt what could be the possible response, the reaction, the sensation for everyone who's going to be affected by the choice that I make? Can you imagine a world in which we were more embodied and we were more aware that our choices have an effect on other people? It could be a beautiful world. It could be a peaceful world. So... Um, People responding to me with these beautiful, positive, inspiring stories of their own self-healing and their own, their own awareness of the choices that they have to live a masterful, uh, movement-filled life, that that's what keeps getting, that that's what gets me on that plane every time. Yeah. Great. And do you have um, an inspiring client story to share with us? I do, I do. I had, I had a client, I have a wonderful client, her name is Sheila Freed, and she gave me permission to use her name, and she lives in New York City now, and she came to me when, um, oh my, my goodness, she must have been about uh, almost 70, and she was extremely scoliotic, very, she, her, her, she was very, very tilted and out of balance, and she had uh, excruciating sciatica pain down her, the back of one of her legs. And she said, I heard that you can fix me. And I said, well, Sheila, I can't fix you, but I can teach you how to fix yourself. And she said, okay, I'm in. And we worked together for a while. We did clinical sessions, and then she did her practice. She was very diligent. And she didn't seem to be making a lot of progress. And I was a little disappointed. I was a, a new practitioner. And then she looked at me one day, and she wagged her finger, and she said, don't you dare give up on me. I think... I think I'm beginning to feel, I think I am, but it's taking me a while. And it was then that I realized that, that everyone learns in a, at a different pace and that some people might have two clinical sessions and they walk out and they have resolved their problem and they do their practice for the rest of their life. Well, some other people take a long time because, because of what has happened to them in their life. And she had had a fair amount of grief and, and trauma in her life. Other people need a lot more time and they need patience. And she said, when I said, I will not give up on you. Well, then she uh, had some more clinical sessions and then she came to a workshop. So this is where it's important to understand the combination of a clinical session and then the movement practice, a workshop or a fundamentals or a daily class or a weekly class. Well, and then she kind of disappeared for a while. And I thought, well, I wonder what's happening with her. Because I wasn't sure if I was, you know, worried. I wasn't sure how it was going to end up with her. And she came back about three months later and when I saw her walk into my office, I burst into tears because this woman who had been so crooked and twisted, she had a beautiful straight spine balanced in both sides of her body. And I burst into tears. I said, what have you done? What happened? And she said, it took me longer than you expected, but you didn't give up on me. And take a look at me now. And she was able to live her dream, which was to move into New York City, to live near her beloved New York City Ballet. She's a patron of the New York City Ballet. And, and to walk around Manhattan. That was the reason that she'd come to me. She wanted to be able to be more, more mobile so she could move back to New York City. And she lived her dream. And to this day, and that was a, oh, I'd say that's a story from about eight years ago. To this day, she'll write to me and say, don't take me off your newsletter because I'm so proud of what you've done. And, uh, and she, but she, yet she taught me that we need to be persistent and we need to be patient. We need to honor our own process because life is a process. We don't unwind our, our muscle tension and our pain and our trauma in, in five minutes. There's no such thing as the five minute abs, right? For, for this kind of thing. This is a process, this is a life process, and it's one to be enjoyed with all its ups and downs. 
Thank you very, very much. You're so welcome. Martha Peterson also has um, some DVDs, when, which which I highly encourage encourage to purchase if you don't have a practitioner or nearby. Um, so yeah, yes. and you want to do some work, and also um, online sessions. Oh yes, we have a, an extensive website. Uh, in which on which we have products, we have uh, my DVDs, <coughs> excuse me, and book. We also have Teresa Evans's downloadable classes, mm -hmm. and we have a page to find a practitioner no matter where you live. Yeah. So yeah, and a movement class around the world. We have now practitioners in uh, Israel. Yeah, Jerusalem. Yeah, and in um, in Europe, in the UK, in Australia, in Canada, America. Uh, yeah, the word is spreading. Yes, yes, the yes. work very is spreading. fast. Yes, yes. Thank you very, Thank you. very much. Thank you so much.